Leaves come in all shapes and sizes. You've only got to look around your garden or the local park to see lots of different shapes, from maple to beech to sunflower leaves. But how do these leaves form? How do they turn from a bud of a few cells into this complex shape? So to find out how something works, you might want to recreate trying to make it. And in this case, we've used computational modelling to recreate a growing leaf virtually. So we used a novel kind of imaging so we can visualise the cells dividing and expanding. And we can use the mathematical model to simulate the growing leaf, try and understand what the recipe was, how was it made. And by combining these, we've actually come up with some simple rules which underlie leaf growth. Because even though we see all these different shapes of leaves, actually there aren't lots of different complicated ways in which they form. We've found that plants have an inbuilt system for detecting orientations, like a built-in compass. But instead of using a magnetic field, they have a molecular pattern which they produce themselves with reference points like the base and tip instead of north and south on a compass. And once you realise that, it's possible to generate lots of different shapes based on this simple system. So this molecular pattern is fixed at a really early stage of development. When a bud starts to divide and turn into a new leaf, the pattern's already present from a very early stage. Part of the pattern is to transform this dome-shaped bud into the flattened leaf shape that we see on the mature plant. But how does that happen? If this dome shape grew equally in all directions, we'd just have a giant dome. We wouldn't have a leaf at all. It wouldn't be flat, it wouldn't have a pointy tip. So what happens is actually there's a molecular pattern and most of the growth comes from the base of the leaf and from the base of this very early bud. And that's the pattern that's fixed early in development. So we're interested in finding out how organs develop. Actually, we haven't used laurel to work on because it would be pretty difficult. It's a really big plant. It's a huge tree. We wouldn't be able to fit that under a microscope. We've used Arabidopsis, which is a model species and it's a relative of lots of important crop plants like Brassica napus, oilseed rape. We've used a confocal microscope to be able to grow the seedling of Arabidopsis under the microscope and actually film it during growth and capture all the cell divisions and cell expansions that are happening. And what we've done is taken the imaging data that we've got, made lots of measurements of how the leaf's growing over time. But to try and understand how leaves are growing, we've used computational modelling. That is creating a virtual leaf. Now you could, you could animate a leaf, you could, you could draw a leaf on your computer. But to actually make a leaf grow dynamically from a young bud and recreate the shape of the leaf, realistically to what we see in biology is much more difficult. We've been able to learn a lot from the images that we've collected and by testing different models we've been able to understand what the rules are for what you would need to make a leaf. So this is an example of one of our models. It's actually a 3D printout of a virtual leaf. So we can see we've captured the leaf shape. It has a narrower region here in the PTO becomes wider in the lamina and narrower up towards the tip. So leaves don't usually look like this with these funny red spots on but actually we use this to help us visualise where the growth is coming from. We mark spots at the very early stage where it's just a small bud and as the, the model grows we can visualise where the growth is coming from. We'd like to extend the model to take account of more leaf shapes like maple leaves which have finger shaped leaves or even much more complex shaped leaves, like this tomato compound leaf, which actually, this is the whole leaf, and it's built up by these smaller leaf lips. This is a major breakthrough in our understanding of plant growth. The more we understand about how plants grow, the better we can prepare for our future, for providing food, fuel, and preserving diversity.